Hello, good morning. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you see where I am? I'm at the Billsley Lane allotments today uh, for a special sensory walk. Uh, as it's allotments week this week, national allotments week, I thought I'd come and show you how allotments can help your mental well-being and your physical well-being as well. So today I've kindly been invited here to Billsley Lane allotments my, by my colleague Marcus Balban, who works for Active Communities Going Wild. I'm joined by Diane as well, who I'll introduce you to shortly. Uh, we'll just wait on a few viewers to join us. So for, before we start, I just want to tell you where I am. So those who know Billsley or Billsley Lane, if I switch the camera, of Billsley Lane, Cambridge Road is across the road, and just here is our entrance for the Billsley Lane allotments on Southlands Road. So we're on Southlands Road and the Billsley Lane allotments entrance is just here. And we've just got three of our um, guests who are just joining us as well, they're here. So I'm gonna introduce you to them one by one. Please do say hello to the, in the comments. Any questions you have, please also drop them in the comments for us to share. I can ask them as we go along. So I'm gonna introduce you to our guest today. So who wants to go first? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Diana, uh, Diana Holston, and I've been a plot holder for about 22 years. Uh, initially, it was my husband, uh, Rod, who was doing the plot, and sadly he died um, about five years ago, so I took over the plot then. So um, it, I'm a, a reluctant gardener in the sense that I'm not a great plant woman, but I do my best, and it's just a beautiful setting. So thank you and thank you for joining us today and, and it'll be great to listen to your 22 years of experience <laughs> working here at, on the allotment so thank you and then we also got marcus active communities wild lead so hello, hello marcus all right there how are you doing i'm all right <laughs> so marcus what are we going to be doing today uh well uh today is part of uh, allotment week actually national uh, allotment week. week which started um after the second world war uh, uh, past the Growth for Victory campaign, which, uh, uh, funny enough, I feel like there's a lot of parallels with what's happening now in terms of people coming out and working more, uh, uh, recognising the, um, the, the, uh, the, the value of uh, going out and, and not just planting and growing, but also just well-being, being amongst nature, uh, the importance and, and valuing those sorts of uh, 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 things they can get from that. Brilliant. So, here we are, Bill's Lane Allotment. Yep, I've just showed where we are, right on the corner of a, quite a big, big housing area, as you can see. Busy road. Uh, we've got Billsley Lane, Cambridge Road, and here, Southlands Road. Um, and it's hidden away. That's the, the beauty of these allotments. A lot of people don't know they're there. Um, I've been using allotments for some of my walks from medical centres. So over in Borsley Green, we've been going to the Borsley Green allotments as part of our walk. Because it's a lovely open green space, and it's great for your well-being. So maybe in the future we can incorporate a bit of allotments, uh, walking in allotments for our people that, you know, are type 2 diabetic, people who want to get out and do walking or have been prescribed to do walking for their well-being as well as their physical well-being, mental well-being. Brilliant. So let's go off and let's go to the entrance. So Diane, do you live locally? I do. I just live just a couple of streets away, Clarence Road. And have you seen many changes here over the years you've been living here? Um, yeah, um, the, plot, uh, the allotment site was much, much larger. It's now about a third of the size that it was. Um, in about the, the land actually belongs to Mo Mosley Golf Club and um, it is rented to Birmingham City Council, who then let it as allotment. Um, and in 2005 there was a, uh, an, uh, a wish on the part of the golf club to reclaim their land because they wanted to develop their club facilities um, and um, as part of the compromise we ended up um, with retaining a third of the land as an allotment site and then two thirds went back to the golf club uh, which you'll see at the bottom. It's been turned into a practice area. So we've um, decreased massively. 
uh, inside and um, so we have now about 28 bots available. It's a relatively inside. small allotment isn't it? It is, it is, mm -hmm. it's very small and there are advantages to that because you get to know people, um, uh, there's a, a really really nice sense of community amongst the people who, who use the, uh, the site whereas when you have a much larger uh, site obviously it's much more difficult to, to get to know but this uh, this old building yeah. here, this brick shed, um, used to be uh, used by I think it was the Home Guard in the Second World War. It was part of their um, meeting point, their station where they kept some of their equipment. So it's really quite nice. It's got a nice a nice history, uh, and we planted a lovely seed and roof on the top of it. Um, oh yeah, I'm just zooming to that to show our viewers. Yeah. Can you see that roof there? And it's, it's, uh, it's, lovely. it's lovely. So yeah, that's a really interesting old building. And they used to be prefab houses along here as well, didn't they? Along Bilsley Lane, not yeah. actually on this piece of land, as far as I know. And it may be that Peter, um, when he joins us, will be able to uh, uh, correct me on that. But certainly up, up Bilsley Lane, um, there, there were, and on the golf course, there were prefab buildings. So I'm just, uh, sorry, I'm just going to pause here because I've turned the corner. I've just got this main view in front of me. Viewers, can you see that? Oh, it's just so great. I can see colours. I can see wildflowers. I can see butterflies, bees. And it's just round the corner from this busy road. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, carry on, Diane. Uh, no, it's okay. And it's, the site isn't looking at its best. Um, the, the lockdown. I mean, people have been coming, interestingly enough, and a lot of, and a lot more work's been done on the plot. But normally, each year we have a um, in June we have an open day, which galvanises everybody to, you know, organise the communal areas um, a, a little more. But even so, it's um, we have all our bays here for the manure and the wood chipping. Nobody yeah. seems to know where this has come from, which is interesting. Has someone donated that? <laughs> So we, it will either get used for, um, I don't know, creating some sort of a cage, you know, sort of fruit cage or something, or if it can't be used, we'll probably end up having it on the, uh, the bonfire in, in November. We have an annual bonfire event. Marcus, do you want to talk a little bit about this area here? And well, this is an area of, um, I'm, I'm part of Woodcraft Folk as well, this is an area we start, we all meet in uh, a lot, and there's a, a shed here with uh, water, it's very often people have a cup of tea down here, yeah. won't they? Yeah. Perhaps not, so, it's closed at the moment I think, isn't it? Yes. But um, uh, uh, perhaps at some point soon that'll be open. And next to actually the building there is actually an earth deposit, do you want to tell a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so it's a composting toilet. Um, we, we built that, I'm just trying to remember when now. Um, something like 10 years ago, um, there were no toilet facilities on the site, and of course that is a disadvantage. So we, we, we built this composting loo, and that's been, that's been great, a really um, big help. And then that last shed is, is um, another um, shed for keeping all our gazebos and chairs and things. And, but my husband, um, he donated it before he died. Um, so it's called the Ling Hut, which was oh, this lovely. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we obviously it's all in need of a little bit of um, TLC because it will need a bit of painting and, and touch up. Yes, it's well set up. It's a nice little community area. And can uh, how do people get involved and how can they use these communal areas here? Um, we we ask the local tree surgeons um, if the. the uh, a lot of us have contact with if they will just bring their chickens down here. So the plot holders just take a barrow load uh, as and when they want to use it. They tend to use it for the pathways and it's something that I should be doing and haven't. Um, and then the manure uh, we, we buy from a farmer and people just pay a pound um, a barrow load as they use it. So Great. It's really helpful. Yeah. So let's go through the weeping willow right in front a little stream on the side lots of butterflies I can see so what types of butterflies do you get here 
Well, Peter, <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter, if, he's, if he comes along in a bit, he'll be able to tell you a lot more about this. I do often have a chat with him uh, along, on the side here. He's, uh, I saw him yesterday actually, just cutting some rhubarb uh, from his plot. And you see all along the stream, yep. there is nettles, you know, all sorts of other plants that the butterflies love. Um, and, um, you know, you look down here now and you'll see two or three butterflies all the time. Last year apparently it was better. If you came down here you'd see you know, dozens of butterflies all the time just flying around this time of year. Um, so it really is, the butterflies uh, a fantastic uh, uh, environment, they obviously love it. Um, yeah. The other animals that love it, that, we, that I guess we have mixed feelings about, is the badgers. Yes, yes, they come and go, don't they? So. Yeah, but uh, this is a, you, you can actually spot, people have spotted badgers here, haven't yes, they? Yes, we have, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, I think certainly last year there was a lot of, the, the ground was turned over, which is classic badger, rooting for, for worms and, 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 and stuff. So they were around most certainly last year, um, and I think they were quite partial to a few vegetables as well. Um, but, you know, it's, it's share and share alike, isn't it? So, so they help themselves for a little bit. Um, sometimes we have to take um, action to try and prevent them eating everything. So, you know, the fruit cages obviously have to be covered and, and, and all the brassicas. Otherwise, actually, we get the, uh, the, uh, the white common moth, don't we, eating our, um, our brassicas. But, uh, yeah, there, there's, of course, loads of squirrels. Lots of cats actually that belong to the houses along here, roam along here, and enjoy it. Yes, actually, just to point out, if you just have a little look across here into the, into the allotment, uh, we notice the pallets uh, just there or, uh, that someone's obviously brought along that's going to use. I, I think it's great in allotments, scavenging, pe people grab things, they use things all the time. So you look here, someone's created a lovely um, uh, spiral um, bed there with out of some old bricks. Um, uh, the, the water butt there, I know, is a recycled uh, water butt that you can get hold of. Yep. Um, and you know all these structures that you see around uh, yep. the uh, the wood that's used for the um, um, raised beds. You'll, you'll you'll see a lot of it is wood that people have got hold of from yep. uh, wherever yep. and um, made use of again. Yep. Yep. There is a particular aesthetic, isn't there, on the side? Yes, it's yeah. uh, very appealing once you got used to the fact that people are just using anything in, in sort of quite ingenious ways. I, mean, I think it's very enterprising. And you'll see there, those, um, that, is it scarlet? Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, climbing French bean there. Uh, scarlet runners? emperor. Would they run this? Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah they are beautiful. Yeah. This time of year, they really do create quite a thing, don't they? They do. So this is Jim's runner bean. Ah, right, OK. <laughs> So I guess you know everyone who's um, on the lot. Mm, mm, quite a few people, yes. Uh, um, up till last year, um, there were a number of people who've been here a while, but have, have, have moved on. So we've got a number of new um, plot holders, which is lovely. Um, and interestingly, the sort of gender uh, balance has shifted. So when we had a plot about 22 years ago, it was predominantly male. Um, plot holders, but now it's half and half. It's uh, yeah, 13 women plot holders and 13 male plot holders. Brilliant! I love that fact. That's great. We want to be seeing more women into activities as well. So that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And if you look down there, actually, a little scarecrow in the middle one. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there are as well, which is great. Yeah. yeah. And this is Marquetta and Jaginda's uh, plot, and um, they love they love to be able to come here. Partly because they have two small children, um, so it's lovely to bring them here. Um, so they get a great deal of pleasure out of it, and just you know, just bringing the children down onto the plot, allowing them, enabling them just to run up and down the track and explore is is just it's magical. You've got a lovely apple tree there as well. Yes, that's that's a beautiful cooker, um, lovely cooking apple. Matthew, just looking at uh, this side, across, yeah. across the river, that was actually the river I was, I was talking about with uh, Matt, um, Peter the other day. Um, now I think I started a plot, uh, working a plot in 90, once you get the bug, you do uh, stay I think with this sort of thing, or I, I have anyway. Um, uh, I think 96 I started in uh, Highbury, 
uh, and then Wheelers Lane, and now with Woodcraft Coach here at um, oh, Dilsey Lane Allotments. Oh, okay. um, but Peter was telling me, 1972 he started here. So I think, he's, is, he, is he your oldest uh, yeah, allotment? he would be, absolutely, yes. I know. Long, well, longest serving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, longest serving and oldest, I think. Yes, yeah, so he's well into his 80s, and he's, um, he's, he's incredibly fit. Um, you know, it's just a testament to how good it is to, to be an allotment gardener, you know, how good it is for you. And he grows, as we all know quite, and he grows lots of lovely vegetables, and he's always extremely generous with, with giving them to other people and, and giving advice and encouragement. So do you find there's a lot of that, you know, community feel when a lot more holders come in and, and work together and yeah. create that, you know, yeah. unity? And welcome new people into yes. it, like you said. So if someone new's there, they quickly bring them into the family. Yeah, yes, we do. We, we, we try as, as hard, um, as best we can. It's been easier over this sort of uh, lockdown period because obviously people have had more time um, to, to spend down here, which is, which is great. And early on in the sort of March period, when you could still come down to the, the allotment, it, that was just a lifesaver, really, because you could just come down here and just, uh, you know, just breathe in all the, the beautiful uh, surroundings, and just you'd always find someone that you could have a, a socially distanced chat with, and, and oh. people would bring you down flasks of coffee and just sitting and having a, a, a coffee, you know, to distance with each other. It was, yeah, it was it was really helpful, I think, you know, from a sort of emotional mental health point of view it'd be great to do that so we were quite fortunate we got the parks that did that and also now the allotments have provided that sanctuary where people can go and and especially early during covid uh, to to find that space you know to gather their thoughts and look after their mental well-being as well yeah yeah, yeah absolutely i think it's uh, and certainly my husband when um he, he used to work full-time he was a teacher at the local school and his salvation, the way he de-stressed um, at the end of every day, was just to come down to the allotment, breathe in the air, and just, you know, have a potter around the, the plots and do a few jobs, and that just calmed him hugely. Um, it was a, you know, a really useful stress, de-stressor for him. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Um, I've got a question, then. If a member of the public wanted to come and just walk through the allotments, will the gates be open at times when you're here? Will the, will, will the people are allowed to come in and, as they want to? Um, to get permission? At the moment we can't because of the COVID restrictions. There are very particular restrictions that have been put in place. So people who are not, you are the city inspector, people who are not part of the, the plot can't come on at the moment, on the site can't come in at the moment. But normally, on a Sunday morning, we have the gates open, and that's when people can just wander in. And, uh, and, and I remember a few years ago now, um, a couple had come over from South Africa, and I think they were touring the UK, and they found the gates open, and they just came in, and they sat down on the grass just down there, and they just had a picnic, and they just soaked it up and enjoyed it, and, and it be we began a very fruitful relationship with them. It was really nice, actually. Um, they, he was a, uh, a filmmaker and, um, he, and he made a film of the allotment site. So that was at least 10 years, I think, ago. So that was really nice, actually. So that sort of serendipity mm. that people can just come in and make connections. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there are events happening all year round uh, oh, in, yeah. in, in the allotments as well, which are, uh, certainly all the local residents get invited to, don't they, direct, yes. directly. And, uh, anyone can come along to and see what's going on. Yes, yes, we have an Easter egg hunt um, in April, and um, that's organised by uh, one of the plot holders, which is a lovely event for the children. And um, then we have the open day in June, which coincides with the Mosley and Bloom open gardens. And and we do uh, we're famous for our tea and cake, so uh, it's definitely not to be missed. And we will have lots of other stores as well. We have bees, um, except sadly we don't have any bees at the moment. They didn't survive the winter, but um, the, normally we have bees and Andy Packer is our beekeeper and he produces 
uh, lots of uh, locally uh, produced honey, which we sell at the Open Day, which, which is great. Um, and then we have a bonfire event as well, which is really nice. I was wondering, do you have some flower growing competitions? We do. Yeah. Yes, this one's a pretty tall here. <laughs> Those are lovely, aren't they? Yeah, they're fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. Just to show you this a little bit closer, look at the, the sunflowers here. The sun shining through as well. So you think get that's kind of the picture of the lily, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's the tallest one I've seen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always forget to grow them. It's really weird. I don't know why. It just sort of doesn't work. So I'm just going to take a few moments just to say hello to our viewers. We've got Nadine Bates. Anne Marie Gallagher from the Real Junk Food Project. Um, everyone's saying it's a beautiful view. Wow, look how big the sunflowers are. Um, good morning, beautiful day by Bev as well. So we've got the viewers who are interacting with us while we're live. So keep those comments coming in. Any questions you have for Marcus or Diane or a volunteer that might be joining us later as well, just pose them in, in the comment section. As we carry on through this beautiful green space, I'm absolutely loving this walk. That's right, yes. Yep. So. And then and we're just coming up to the boundary with the golf course. And I can show you where the the, the allotment site used to extend to. But lots of lovely buddleas and oh, look at the butterflies on that yeah, buddleas. Yeah. And that yeah, and it's covered at one time, but of course the buddleas were going over now. And I love the way actually the allotments uh, well along the um uh, stream, there's all the wildflowers, everything is allowed to grow. Mm. Uh, and also at the bottom of people's allotments as well, they have either planted flowers or uh, let yeah. things like the budgie just uh, yes. take, take over. Yeah, okay. um, it's nice. very important to attract the pollinators, have as many, many flowers. Trees along the boundary here we decided to plant uh, fruit trees so they're still obviously in their relative infancy although they've been there for probably about seven years and we've dedicated um, each of the fruit trees to a particular plot holder um, who has either retired and, and, and moved on or who has died and so we've got um, we've got one dedicated to my husband and various other. That's a lovely, a lovely nice thing to do. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, nice so mm. here's the boundary line. And the allotment site used to extend right down to the tree boundary and, and both sides of the stream and all the way up here. So as you see, it was Quite a big site. Yes. Um, yeah. We we are actually stood next to the um uh, the bean. Is that you wouldn't know are. it, but just over there, just over that green thing, that that that, that is uh, there to help push the bees up into the air so they, they don't yeah. fly. And they when they if they take flight and and uh, swarm, they they go out in that direction as opposed to over the heads of uh, of, of plot holders, uh, but. Uh, um, yeah, Sandy obviously will reintroduce um, some bee colonies when he's able to. Yes, yeah. and you can see the bees are loving the buddy here. Oh, it's not. Sorry, this isn't buddy. What is this? Oh, I've forgotten the name. Of it. <laughs> the bees are loving that. It's fantastic. Yeah. Actually, it looks like mint, doesn't it? Maybe. Yes, it smells like mint, actually, isn't it? It's in, yeah, it's in obviously just mint and flower. In flower, wow, it's really going through it, isn't yeah, it? You don't see that very often. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, Great should, we, smell. should we walk up to the bird hide? It might be a bit, I don't know how this will work out with uh, uh, filming, but we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll okay. Because actually, in terms of, uh, well, we talked about nature a lot, and uh, obviously allotments are great for wildlife too, and uh, community groups are very involved in it too. Um, Woodchuck folk, uh, which I've become, I'm a part of, uh, have enjoyed using this site as well. It's a really, it's really good to have that special relationship with an allotment. We we actually own have a plot. Own, I use the wrong. That's the wrong word. What, what do we rent? We rent. We rent a plot <laughs> um, from from here, and it's it's been fantastic for us to come down here to 
to grow things certainly, but also to pick and use some of the things that are around us. So like the apples, uh, we now have an annual um, thing because I know there's, there's nearly always a lot of apples left. That's um, right, yeah. So um, we have a, 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 an apple masher, which is like a big stick, and they just literally mash and mash them up. That's um, yes, we have actually got now an, an apple squeezer, uh, one that actually turns, but I think they'll probably still enjoy using the stick to, I to um, yeah. uh, mash it, uh, to make the apple juice, and also, um, you know, just tasting apples, all the different varieties of apples, um, all those sorts of things, getting um, kids involved in uh, seeing these things around. There aren't many of them that are interested in actually growing, that come to here, I have to say, that it doesn't matter because there's spaces here to play games, to have fun, and to make things, yeah. a whole range of different things. Yes, and you never know what children absorb, even when you think they're not absorbing anything, they're taking things that in which have an impact at a later point, without them sort of knowing it really. And they'll have wonderful memories of being down here, and I love the idea of it, that your group has, has a plot here and is able to do things here. I think it's wonderful. And as Just you say, we... One Just going to point out the, the bench here. Yes. So there are benches that need a little bit of care, but <laughs> imagine just sitting here. I'm going to sit here, guys, for the viewers. So you've just come out to your allotment plot and you're just taking a breather and you're taking all this in. Uh, now, I wish you guys were here with me to see it from my level here, but hopefully the camera's doing some justice to this. It's absolutely beautiful. The flowers are incredible, actually. And listening to the bird. I mean, that was, that was something that I found really helpful, um, you know, in the early days of COVID when it was very, very stressful and, and frightening because we didn't know really what was happening and what was going to happen. And just to be in the stillness and the, just to listen to the birds and, and that crops was just wonderful. I loved, I loved that. Yes, we asked viewers to send in bird song. Uh, for one of the elements that we're working on uh, for the Active Wildbeing Society. So lots of people sent in the bird song yeah. in their gardens. Yeah, so, so soothing. So yes, lots of variety of apples. Oh, that, the, 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 the colours on there. Isn't it lovely? They're really enjoying that as well, aren't they? Overshadowed a little, yeah. And these teasels, uh, I think I mentioned before actually, but but they are uh, and great fun to play with uh, and to use in crafts, make make little teasel m mice and other things. So someone said, it looks stunning, the bird song's just lovely. Um, someone's put deceptive space, you would never think it was there. Um, every, well, we've got Nadine saying, was it Spirea? Is, it, is that how you pronounce it? Spirea or Spirea? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, well done. Said that. Well done, Nadine. <laughs> Thumbs up from us all here. <laughs> now, yes, there is a, a little pond. We've just actually, last Sunday, had is a, that the pond? a yeah. working party to try and clear some of the um, the growth, of course, some of the brambles grow uh, very, very quickly here. There's still some work to be done. We're going to struggle to get up to the Yes, hive. I think so. The, it's um, a bit... So yeah, that, a that's hive. what we were trying to get to. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bird hide, so you can sit in there and be completely invisible. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, uh, not that you need a lot of... Uh, um, cover to, to, to hear and to see the birds. Yeah. Um, I think actually the, the golf course has a fantastic number of different trees as well, doesn't it? Uh, a lovely specimen. Yes, yes they are. At. Yes, it's a, it's a great variety of trees. And, and I know uh, uh, that there have been woodpeckers here before, haven't there? Yep, yep, you're right. Often here actually, the woodpeckers. Yeah. And owls. Yes. Yeah. 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 And bats as well, actually, thinking about it, so woodcraft folk, uh, because we generally meet in the evening, it's one of the, one of the uh, things we do, actually, is to come out and um, uh, you see them to start with. You can also hear them because they're not with your actual ear. You have a little box that you can um, oh, yeah. use to um, uh, 
here where the bats are. There's at least two different sorts of bats flying around here, uh, obviously taking advantage of all the insects that are flying around in the pond, mm -hmm. uh, and generally around here, yeah. Yes, and, and, and another colony of animal that's thriving are ants. We have huge numbers of ants on, on, the, on the plot, always have done. And they don't, I mean, we just live side by side with them, so they, they don't damage the, the, the crops we grow at all. They're just a slight hazard, because unless you're wearing Wellingtons, and I certainly wouldn't come down <laughs> to the plot in these <laughs> Um, unless you're wearing Wellingtons, you get nipped quite a bit, but, um, oh, nice. but it's a huge, um, yeah, it's a huge spread of, of, of the hands to go to the front. We will come and have a look at the um, woodcraft spot. Which is yes. Here. So we're heading down the path again, the same path that we came up um, past the, uh, the trees here with the fruits. And some of the houses from there got some absolutely beautiful views of the allotment. Marion, our chair, sat on the um, ben on that bench, and it broke. Oh. So, <laughs> they're most. I mean, that's again the lovely thing about allotment sites is most of the uh, the chairs and the seats and things we've got around have all just been reclaimed from skips or people who've given them to us. Um, just used what's been at hand, which is lovely. Oh, and that's actually, a great break there. Yeah. Uh, can you explain a bit about the working parties, actually? What, what, what do you, when you say working party, what, what is that? We um, organise as and when we need them. Just send an email around to the potholders just saying, look, we need a bit of work doing. So I sent around an email. In fact, it was only in the middle of last week, the Sunday that's just gone, just saying we've got a big problem with brambles along the boundary and in various other places and it's wonderful people just turn up um, and if they can't turn up at the time on the day then they'll do a little bit when they can do it so for instance Peter very kindly came down and and sorted out a lot of the brambles along here because we couldn't make Sunday itself when we did it um, mm -hmm. so there's a, a real sort of sense of everybody sort of working together and um, you know, trying to, to keep the site in a reasonable state. At this time of year, of course, things grow at an enormous rate, so you have to keep on top of things. Yes, yep. especially with the rain and the sunshine, everything gets yes, it's incredible, perfect, isn't it? perfect growing conditions. Yes, particularly for courgettes, you just you pick your courgette, you turn your back, and then the next one has grown <laughs> massively. <laughs> If anybody's got a glut of courgettes, I've just come across a really nice recipe for courgette fritters, um, which I can highly recommend. Put it in the comments after the video's over. We'll share it on to the viewers here, yeah? Yeah, it was lovely. Um, really, really nice. It is, it is really nice uh, uh, when someone does have a glut. Uh, there's a little note put in a box of the, uh, of the shed or near, near that sort of area and people just help themselves. And it's really nice that... that um, even if your crop hasn't worked out, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you might get something. Somebody else, is, uh, somebody will share theirs. Yeah, yeah. And I, I tell you what was a lovely thing actually. It was either last year or the year before, and I would I had a, a glut of squash and pumpkin and and cucumbers, um, and um, I just put them so just across Bilsley Lane from the entrance. There's a brick wall around somebody's garden. Um, on Cambridge Road and Bilsley Lane, and I just put all the excess produce there, and and it was just wonderful. It just got used, it got taken. I knew there was a risk that it might just be smashed or trashed in some way, but there was never any sign of that. And um, and I know that another potholder does the same thing. So it's a nice way of trying to sort of just share your you know the excess produce. That's we, really nice. Yeah. And we talked about um, community groups being involved. There's all, I mean, in other, at other plots, I know the Real Junk Food Project have a uh, plot in Bass Lane uh, and possibly some other places as well. Uh, so the food is literally grown and 
taken to local um, uh, places to be cooked and uh, uh, yeah. uh, fed to people. I went yeah. to Highbury Orchard and they said they work with the Royal Junk Food Project as well. Yes. Yeah. So there's, there is a real network to make sure, if it, even if uh, well, it goes to straight away to the people that are growing it and then the people, there's a whole uh, network of people that are, that are getting the food from uh, uh, allotments across the whole of Germany, which is fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's really, it's that whole philosophy of eating real food and sharing. Um, So we're going to go across to the wood uh, woodcraft uh, well, plot. Yes, I'll have, have a look down the stream as we go. Oh yeah, I'll so. show the stream. They do sometimes go in there. They shouldn't do. They, they will always have wellies, but um, it's just too tempting, <laughs> to, uh, you know, to get in there and, and have a look, have a look inside uh, what's going on. It's phenomenal when we have a torrential downpour or the uh, waste water, because of course we're at the bottom of uh, sort of. Of a bit of a hill up Cambridge Road, and it just cascades down here in a torrent of water. It's just phenomenal. And the last time it did that, which was only a few weeks ago, it actually broke the the banks and sort of flooded a little bit, which you know is not uncommon. Yeah. Yes, actually, this part down here, I think, is one of the the, the wetter corners, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. in fact, if, if you could go down, I'll, 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 before we go to the actual woodcut. Yeah. Um, I mean, these, these are like communal areas. That this is there's one at the, at the top end in this, this area here, which is like ideal for people to meet up and, um, like, say, have a picnic. Is this? Uh, yes, this is where they have a picnic. It's in need of a, a cut at the moment, but um, yes, we every Sunday morning we just sort of grab one of those chairs and uh, bring a, you know, open our flask of coffee and have a, a drink. Together. Well, and again, it's absolutely beautiful spot here. If you were here again, and I'm just going to go back down to ground level. Just imagine sitting through here, having your cup of tea, having a bite to eat. Let's have the view around you. Peaceful, away from traffic, the bird song, the bees, the butterflies. And I can see some compact discs on the on this flat. <laughs> so what's the reason for them to be well, there? It flashes light and, uh, and the, the hope is that it will put off. Uh, marauding squirrels who tend to like to eat the sweet corn um, and it's just to try to deter birds that might be wanting to peck at the, at the food. How successful it is I have no idea. Yes all these things is a bit you know you try it out and <laughs> yeah. see if it works and this is just to protect your eyes a bit isn't it I presume you want to put on Yes there. yes you're right. So yeah. you don't poke your eye that's yeah. great. Yeah. And actually this is left over I think from an activity we did a while ago with a, oh. a magnet uh, uh, the leftover from the um, uh, fire, there were some bits of wood that got in there. Yeah, uh, nails wood. and things. Like yeah, that. but uh, after we this, we this, uh, you can get all of these magnets and just picks up all sorts of bits and bobs. Mm. I'll stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, right. This is a lovely uh, plot here that um, the couple who have this. Uh, Zoe and John have worked very hard to reclaim it and uh, now producing some lovely crops um, and beautiful flowers. Look at those honey hooks, beautiful. Yes, and there's more apple trees you'll see dotted in among the story. This is my favourite uh, type of apple, uh, russet. Oh, oh, and mine. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. that's lovely. Very, very fantastic. And, uh, I've got a question, Diane, from Laura, one of our viewers. So gorgeous allotments. How long is the average waiting time for a plot if they ever come up? Oh, well, we've just gone through the waiting list because of um, this whole pandemic. It's increased people's desire to be out in the open. So we've had a lot of people wanting to join recently. I think there's something like 20 people on the waiting list at the moment. And as we've only got a plot of a uh, site of 28 plots and, and if you consider that somebody like me and Peter have been here for decades um, it's sadly it's quite a long wait except that people often put their names down on the list and then they move away or their circumstances change that they can no longer take up the offer and they don't remove their name so we have a clear out of the list from time to time which we've just done so it's always worth putting your name down because you never know. It might turn up much more quickly than you think, but it's uh, potentially a long wait. And, and because there's a network, I mean, I 
first got an allotment because, uh, well, I, I first shared an allotment with a friend who was already on Highbury um, uh, Park, the one around the back there. So we had we shared a plot with them for two years, and that's one way if you know someone who has a plot. Yeah. Um, uh, and and also different plots have very different waiting lists, and it fluctuates so much. I think it's probably high now, but I, but I know when I was at, on Wheeler's Lane, there was a time when there were, were plots, a lot of plots vacant. Um, I suspect probably now there are more people looking to to, to take on allotment, so it is worth getting your name on the list mm -hmm. uh, now to, to contact your local allotment. I think there's a number on Birmingham City Council for the allotments generally if you want to find where your local allotment is and um, to get your name on, on your lo yes. uh, local allotments list. Yeah. Thank you. And then Nikki just added, eating real food and sharing. How lovely. That's what we're all about. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it's a great community. I just wanted to show, actually, uh, around the back here, there's um, all the flowers and things, you know, fantastic. The front of the shop, if you like. But um, there's always stuff happening in the back of an allotment, and I thought it would be nice just to show a little bit. Yeah. I, know, I know the working party has been working on this. That's right. Mm. Uh, to, to clear this area. I mean, this was very high with bramble not so long ago. And um, a couple of years ago, we planted a uh, willow dome there that has, has, has been re dug out from under the brambles, really. <laughs> still bits of it alive, but not very much of it alive. We might, I think, we'll replant that. Um, but we have um, uh, the DIA group is our district fellows, uh, uh, 16 plus, so 16 to uh, I think Louise, uh, 18, uh, that sort of age group who uh, come and do. Um, uh, things on the plot and they've been doing helping with some of the clearing uh, and enjoying being out here too so it really is something you know um, they, they they do that uh, they are, they're very respectful of the the space uh, mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic we have the elfins who are six to ten year olds um, who come out here and do um, we organize activities far more for them uh, and uh, have a lot of fun here uh, the um, pioneers 10 to 13 uh, the Venturers, 13 to 16, and they all make use of this space. Um, you know, they all come down here at different times to do to do things. So there's about 70 odd people who are using the space to do woodcraft folk alone. Mm -hmm. And, I, and the, I know there are connections with other groups and other 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 things going on here too. So it really is a lot of people using this. Now you, yeah. you probably Just can't, gonna you can probably feel it's, yeah. it feels a bit soft on the ground. Mm, yeah. What am I stood on? Ants. Quite possibly. <laughs> yes. um, oh, is that, there is an answer on me there. Um, yeah, but it is very soft ground here. Um, willow grows very well, you can see, um, because this is quite wet. So it's actually not that suitable for growing anyway, is it? No. Back here? It's, and it's a struggle in this particular area. Um, yeah, which is, which is fine because yeah. we find enough patches to, to grow things. Uh, and like uh, you've been finding through um, the, uh, the last, uh, through the shutdown period, lockdown period, um, it's, our group hasn't actually been formally meeting. Um, we have been informally coming down as families to uh, look after it once in a while mm. uh, and, mm. and have some, some fun or whatever. Mm. But um, uh, it isn't as well, well, uh, like I say, you know, but it is being well used. So this yes, area here that's the key thing. is actually a pond area and a sort of wildlifey area that we've got. It's just been cut back a little bit. Mm. But um, uh, as we move forward into our, our plot, uh, comfrey here is growing. It's a very good compost. We grow there, and uh, just a bin for a water butt. You can use almost anything for a water butt. Uh, we were very lucky. A lot of things. Uh, uh, we inherited a nice plot here in the first place. In fact, someone even left us some tools, which was really nice oh, too. Yeah. We so we, we had a really good head start on things. Um, I love your scarecrows, by the way. Ah, right. Well, the scarecrows. <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about next. Yes. It's, it's National Youth Day today as well. Is so it? we oh, yes. So we have got a session at, coming at 11 o'clock about poetry with Punch uh, and they're going to be doing a, the youth are going to be making a poem together, so uh, writing a poem together. So what can we, what can we say on Youth Day today, um, Marcus, and how are we going to tie in our scarecrow well, building? Get out there and en enjoy your outdoor space. I mean, scarecrow, scarecrow making is a fantastic activity to do. I mean, I've talked about other activities like the bat watching and the... Um, uh, uh, apple juice making and other things you can uh, do in the teasels and other things. Uh, now for the scarecrows, you know, it's it's, some, it's great it's great fun first of all in preparation doing, doing a bit of a scavenge to find the sort of things you need to use. Um, if you have a, I mean this is a um, 
Zombie Night is one of our favourite nights at uh, Woodcraft Folk. Um, so, um, <laughs> this one is a zombie. Is a zombie. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, and you see the zombie. Yeah. I have a. Th have we do move them around a bit. I don't know if that. Maybe that helps uh, scare away <laughs> the birds. I don't know. Um, I'm, I have a feeling they're probably not that effective, but they're, they're certainly a lot of fun to make. Mm -hmm. um, great. I love them. So yeah, the things to think about is to make sure you have some stuffing. Now this one's with newspaper. Um, uh, make sure it's biodegradable, whatever you're doing. Obviously it's going to be outside. Grass cuttings is a, a really obvious one. Yeah. Um, these ones are from last year actually, just to explain. So they're looking a bit old, old and tired every time you move them. They sort of lose a, lose a limb or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're zombies. They're supposed to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a bit of a sackcloth for a face. And this one's with um, things, um, uh, duct tape, I think it is, to, for a face. Uh, and some old clothes. Someone, that someone's old tied there, yeah. I know, yes. Oh, that is a, a, a nautical theme on that one. Um, Which is quite appropriate, given the dampness of this particular yes, Yeah, no, area. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it looks like one of my old cricketing hats there on that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an old football for a head. That's yeah. a, 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 a good idea. Football over here. Old wooden bamboo. For the, that's, uh, that's what's so magical about it, isn't it? You can just let your imagination as a child just give it free reign and, and yeah. just, you know, just make things up and do what you can with what you can find. Yes. Yeah. So Marcus, we've just come to the end of our time today, but we are back here on Monday, and we're going to have an attempt at building some, yes, making we, some scarecrows. We have three um, special guests. Uh, I think they're from our pioneers, so they're sort of ten to thirteen year olds. Um, uh, so, uh, and we will be probably starting with these scarecrows because they are last year's ones. We might be um, redoing bits of them, but also I think bringing along, having a little scavenge around and see what we can find to um, uh, make some lovely uh, scarecrows uh, and it's a great activity to have a go at. There's a lot of uh, scarecrow festivals, there's scarecrows and you see down the allotment you can put it out in your front door, you can make a, a protest with your scarecrows to get somewhere prominent, you can do, do whatever you like with your scarecrows, please, please do have a go at it. You can make them indoors as well, you can make little puppets uh, wooden spoons and I think the resources will be going live today, I hope so. Possibly, too. yeah. Um, uh, uh, to uh, on, on our website, uh, to give you a few ideas, but to be honest, you don't really need. Uh, uh, you just just look at the stuff that's around you. Find find the things you can. Um, the stuffing, I guess, you know, grass or news, newspaper yep. or shreddings, um, a few sticks, and and you and you. You're you know. you're ready to go. Oh, actually, one thing I would suggest is I, I think just because it's disappointing when they just sort of flop. Uh, garden wire, I find, is really useful. Um, just to um, uh, tie it together or to, to strap it to a, a washing pole or whatever it is you, you, you're doing. I think that's I think that's really useful. That's great. So you can see the garden wires being used to tie them to, together there. Um, so if you've got garden wire or any string or anything that you can use at home, uh, have that ready. And uh, on Monday, we will be doing a live session back from this beautiful space again, those Elaine allotments. And we're going to have some young people helping us build scarecrows. So that's uh, something you should tune in, get, get the whole family watching, get them involved. Um, and fingers crossed, we're going to have another gorgeous, beautiful day like this as well. So I'm just going to have to say sorry, but we have to end because I've gone beyond my time now. So is there any final, final messages for our viewers who've been following this video and who will watch it later as well? Oh, just as just been a pleasure to uh, to be able to share this lovely little area with with people and in a way that we normally don't get to so and and we will be having more open days things will return to normal so please come along if you if you spot that you know we we're open you would be very welcome to come and visit thank you from us uh, Diane thank you for your knowledge and all the information you shared with us today um, and we will be asking Diane to share things when there are things going on like the fireworks like, like the bonfire sorry and, and other activities once we're out of lockdown. Marcus over uh, to you. Well happy National Lottery na National, National you, you, Allotment yeah. Week and Youth Day. Day. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah I hope to uh, see you all uh, being active outdoors at some point. Uh, stay safe everyone. Brilliant. Laura says thank you. Nadine says thank you. 
hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, back Monday, 10 o'clock normal time for our scarecrow building. Please do join me. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye bye.